What's going on, everyone? This is Eric coming at you live from just outside Hartford, Connecticut for Heartland Sports. I'm just going to do a sound check real quick. So hopefully everything's working okay. Let me turn on my sound. Testing one, two. Perfect. All right. So I do apologize that the mic's kind of awkwardly in the way type of thing. But uh, yeah, uh, this will be our first live stream for me, at least, you know, my first live stream here. So hopefully everything works out OK. Uh, this will be exciting. You know, today's a video I've been working on for a few couple, like about a month at this point. I've uh, been doing all my research on the players drafted before Mike Trout. But before we get into that, let's quickly go with the whole, you know, what this is going to be about. So this is a new series that we're going to be doing, that I'm going to be doing. It's not going to be as common as the history of videos. But what I'll do is I'll find a player that was drafted early on, you know, in the first round or something, and discuss the players that were drafted before him, before said superstar. So obviously... I'm not going to be doing a video about, let's just say, LeBron James because he went, what, first overall? There's no point in doing a video about him. Nobody cares about the guys that went before him because nobody went before him. I'm not going to do a video about the, every single 198 players drafted for Tom Brady, but I will do a video about the six quarterbacks that went before Tom Brady. That'll be the next one of these series of videos that comes out. I don't know when it will come out, but it will be coming out soon. Um, but other than that, you know, I do have my notes here. I have eight pages of notes. So it'll be exciting. It'll be a good video, um, about what's going on here in the background. This isn't going to be my normal setup. It's just my temporary one for the time being, as you can see, I have, you know, I'm just in like my family room here. This is my backup location. I don't want to be here and I can't really do videos here all the time because as you can see, the sun's kind of right here and it gets worse as the day goes on. So if I'm still doing this at like two, which I shouldn't be, the sun will be hitting my face. You can already kind of see it and uh, it could be much worse, but fortunately where we're at, we don't have to deal with that right now. So anyway, um, you guys can also see this nice cuckoo clock. <laughs> um, if you didn't know, I, I have German heritage and, you know, German heritage, cuckoo clocks go hand in hand. But anyway, um, about me, what I'm wearing, obviously I got my old school Phillies hat on. This is my first you know, my first time being on camera, so I wanted to show that I'm a Phillies fan, of course. And I got my uh, jersey on. Nice jersey. Uh, I'm a stereotypical Phillies fan. You could say this Bryce Harper jersey. So uh, say what you will. Doesn't bother me. You know, I liked it when he signed. I remember it was, uh, what, the February 28th when he signed. And I was walking around my house, you know, just kind of bored out of my mind because I had nothing else to do. And all of a sudden, I get the notification, Bryce Harper to sign with the Phillies. And I, I jumped up. I'm like, let's go. And my poor cat was near me. She just jumps and runs away. I'm like, oh, God, I forgot that you were right there. I, I was so excited. I was so excited when they signed Harper. But, you know, it is what it is at this point. Uh, things are over. So let's jump into the video. So uh, what we have here, it's the 2009 MLB draft. And we were very, you know... I didn't really follow a draft at this point, especially not for baseball. But um, so at the 25th overall pick, you know, everybody knows who the LA Angels select. They select an outfielder named Mike Trout. Uh, everybody knows Trout. Everybody knows what he does. You know, best player in baseball. I think I can easily say that. Nobody's going to disagree with me. Uh, he went to Millville, Millville High School in uh, New Jersey. So he grew up, he grew up either, you know, he's been kind of quiet about baseball, but he was probably a Yankees fan because, you know, at the time he's, a, he's a diehard Eagles fan, but at the time when uh, he was growing up, the Phillies were awful, you know, for the majority of it. So there's no point in him being a Phillies fan if the Yankees and Mets are right there too. But, uh, you know, he grew up a big fan of sports, obviously he loved baseball. He excelled at baseball. He goes 25th overall to the LA angels. Um, so about Trout, I do have information written about him. So, you know, he debuted in the 2011 season. I mentioned it before. I did get to see him play in his rookie year against the New York Yankees in August. I don't have the exact date. I could Google it, but um, it was one of the games I went to, and I was very excited about it. 
And I remember, you know, I think I mentioned this too. I had a lot of videos on my old phone and I, you know, I was so excited about Mike Trout and then the phone got lost and over time it just got lost, I should say. And unfortunately I don't have them anymore, but I was very, very excited about seeing him play. It was a, it was a great game. You know, I, I don't remember who won. I just remember seeing Mike Trout. So, um, now, I didn't do as much information on Trout as I did some of these other guys, just because I don't want the video to be 20 minutes about Trout. But, you know, he's been an all-star every year from 2012 to 2019. So it's eight consecutive all-star seasons. And 2012 was his official rookie year because his 2011, he didn't play every game. So he was, you know, he wasn't a rookie. He didn't qualify to being a rookie. So 2012 was his rookie year. And he easily won the AL Rookie of the Year Award over Jonas Cespedes, another outfielder. I think he was the Athletics at that time. Um, he, he was, he's been an AL Silver Slugger seven times in his career. So 2012 to 2016, and then again, 2018, 2019. 2017, he tore a UCL in his thumb, stealing, uh, I believe it was second base. So he missed about a month and a half, two months of action. And that did cost him the uh, Silver Slugger Award, but not an all-star appearance. I remember that, it was, you know, it was heartbreaking. It's always heartbreaking to see an injury to a, a key player like that. Um, in 2012, he actually also, you know, he, he actually had the best war for any player as a rookie, any position player as a rookie with a 10.5. Now, war is wins above replacement. So basically what that means is if you put out an average Joe, Trout versus the average Joe. Trout won the Angels 10 and a half more games than the average Joe would have. It takes into consideration like clutch hits, hits obviously, defense, everything. It takes everything into consideration. Now, war isn't exactly the best judgment of everything, but this isn't an analytics channel, so I'm just going to go with war and say it's wins above replacement. It just means, you know, wins above replacement, how he would do compared to an average Joe. If you took Joe Schmo and threw him out in center field, you know, an, an average Joe Schmo of MLB players, not me, but like an average Joe Schmo, he would get zero wins. He, his war is zero. Trouts was 10.5 in a single season. That's unheard of. There are plenty of guys we'll get to on this list whose war didn't even hit 10.5 in their MLB career. So, and yes, war does go both ways. You can't have a negative war, which means you cost your team more wins than the average player would have. Anyway. Getting back into it, um, Trout also was the AL MVP in 2014, 2016, and 2019. So three years, he won the AL MVP award. He was very close a couple other times, but, you know, again, 2017, the injury cost him. 2018, he had an injury that cost him. But he's just – he's such a good player. Um, primarily, obviously, a center fielder plays DH sometimes, too, to give him a day off here and there on the field. He's a very good defensive player, too. He's not the best, but he's very good. Um, so in 2012, he led the league in stolen bases with 49 and runs scored with 129. Uh, just, just to give you guys, you know, a little update on that guy. He, he had amazing speed. He hasn't had it as much anymore ever since he, tore, you know, tore the UCL. He's kind of been more careful with his speed. Um, in 2013, he led the American League in runs and walks. In 2014, he led the American League in RBIs in the major leagues in runs and total bases. And that was his first you know, MVP award, or MVP season, I should say. In 2015, he led the American League in slugging percentage and on base percentage, or OPS, sorry, which is on base percentage and slugging percentage. So, you know, this guy, he's doing it all. He has stolen bases. He has good, you know, he has good contact. He's getting on base. He's drawing walks. He's getting RBIs, getting runs. He's doing it all. He doesn't have, you know, elite power, but he doesn't need elite power. He has great power. He doesn't need to be elite at every little thing. Um, in 2016, he led the majors in runs, walks, and OP OBS, again, uh, on base percentage. And that was good enough for his second AL MVP award. 2017, like I mentioned, in um, late May of 2017 is when he tore the UCL on his thumb. And he missed six weeks, it was. So then he did end up leading the majors in OPS that year, even though he missed the six weeks. And he led the AL in on-base percentage and slugging percentage again. 
and intentional walks with 15. So he had in 15 intentional walks despite missing six weeks of baseball. And that's good enough to lead the American League. Pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. Um, in 2018, he led the majors in on-base percentage, OPS, and intentional walks, as well as in the American League in walks. So this guy, you know, he's, he's definitely doing a lot. And uh, he led the majors in slugging percentage, in the AL and on-base percentage, OPS, and intentional walks in 2019, which was good enough to win his third AL MVP award. Now, that's enough about Trout for his career at this point. You know, that's what he's done. I don't, I didn't bother including the minor leagues for him because he's just been so good. He kind of flew through the minors, you know, 2009 draft pick as a high school student making his MLB debut in July, I believe those of of 11. So, you know, about two years spent in the minors as a high school kid. That's pretty damn impressive unless you're drafted first overall. But even then, um, his career war 72.8. So he has helped the Angels win 72.8 games more than a replacement player. So he's good. He's he's very good. Hall of Fame worthy. The minute he steps on the field in 2020, yes. So basically, Trout should have gone first overall. Hindsight's 2020. Teams don't want to typically take a chance on high school players, specifically position players. But what does that mean when it comes to who went 1 through 24? Now, I do remember this because this was the first time I really, really started following the uh, the draft at all. First overall pick was a definite, no doubt, easy pick. The Washington Nationals picking first overall went with a college player, pitcher named Steven Strasburg out of San Diego State. I don't think anybody questioned that choice when it was made. Strasburg was like the best player in baseball, in the college baseball at that time. And I do apologize. We might hear a noise in a couple seconds. A big 18 wheeler just kind of started driving by. And I don't know if he's going to get turned around or if he's going to have to come by my house. So if that happens, I do apologize. Um, anyway, so Strasburg, like I said, was consensus number one pick in the draft. Um, he was, you know, basically right before the 2010 season, he was named the number two prospect in baseball and the number one pitching prospect, according to Baseball America. And they're very, they're usually very good with their uh, rankings. So he makes his debut in 2010. And, you know, Patrick was talking about it too when we were talking about our favorite NL players. He mentioned at one point, at one point, he mentioned Strasburg. And he mentioned that he was actually at Strasburg's one of his first games, if not his very first game. It was in Atlanta against the Braves. So he said, you know, it's so exciting. If you want to, um, I'll, I'll find out the video and I'll definitely let you guys know. I'll get the, uh, I'll put a link or I'll put what the title is in the description after the live stream's over. Um, but yeah, it's pretty exciting. Maybe he and I can do videos discussing our favorite sports moments, like the games that we've been to specifically just to those. Cause we did that in our getting to know Heartland sports video. We did mention games that we've gone to. I think I mentioned my Mike Trout experience there, but we'll see. Um, so in late August though, of 2010 for Strasburg, he ends up having to undergo Tommy John surgery. And I don't want to get into the specifics of Tommy John surgery, but basically it's just, the pitcher has problems in the arm, elbow, shoulder area, and uh, you need to get surgery on it. And the first time it was performed successfully, it was obviously on a player named Tommy John of the New York Yankees, who's actually consistently making his name known on the uh, veterans inductee list for baseball. He almost was inducted this year, but he wasn't, unfortunately. Maybe he will soon. You know, everybody knows the name Tommy John if you follow baseball, so... Um, yeah, so basically Tommy John made it so Strasburg didn't play in 2011 at all because they, or if he did, it was very few because they didn't want to risk it. You know, this guy's our number one prospect. They don't want to risk injury to him. Um, so in 2012, he makes it all, he makes his first appearance in the all-star game with his first all-star season. Believe it or not, he actually won the silver slugger award for pitchers in 2012. He had a 277 average. I remember when I learned that, I just started laughing. I'm like, oh, oh wait, that's right. Some pitcher has to get the uh, Silver Slugger Award. I was more surprised it wasn't Bumgarner, but, you know, Bumgarner can't win it every year. Um, in 2014, he or 2013, he was okay. He didn't, you know, excel. He looked okay. 2015, 
2014 comes into play. He leads. This is where he comes to his own. He leads the National League in strikeouts with 242, and he leads the major leagues in starts with 34. So this guy is making his name known. He's young still, you know, relatively young, relatively young still, but he's he's making his name known. Um, he made the All Star game again in 2016, and made it again in 2017, having an even better year. Now, he ends up finishing third in NL Cy Young voting in 2017. In 2019, he leads the National League with games won with 18. So he wins 19 ga- 18 games Sorry, in 2019, and he threw an NL high 209 innings pitched. So, you know, durability concerns were a concern for him at the beginning of his career, but 2019, he kind of proved, okay, you know what, I, I, can, I can pitch, I can pitch. He threw 209 innings. Uh, that obviously, like I just said, let the end out. Um, now, he basically, a lot of people who didn't know, if you didn't know who he was before the playoffs, you definitely knew who he was after the playoffs. He killed it. He killed it. He went 5-0 and with a 1.98 ERA, 0.94 whip, and 47 uh, strikeouts. And he was a co-MVP of the playoffs with one of my favorite players, Juan Soto. And was the 2019 World Series MVP. So, quick sidetrack here. ERA is earned run average. It just takes into consideration the number of runs that you allow as a pitcher with innings pitched. So, it, earned runs basically means if a guy was reached base on an error or scores on an error, it doesn't count against you. And whip is walks, hits, e- inning pitched. So, the amount of walks and the hit, hits that you allow – for every inning that you pitch. Let's just say you allow two hits and a walk in an inning pitched. Your whip is 3.00. That's not good at all. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I just just in case anyone's watching, they don't know the terms. Um, so Strasburg's career war at this point is 33.5. So that's pretty dang good. It's not elite. It's not trout, but it's pretty damn good. Um, so second overall, we have the Seattle Mariners picking. And, oh, boy, you know, when I do the history of Seattle Mariners video, I'm going to be shedding a tear for you guys. So many missed opportunities. So many missed opportunities. But, again, that's a story for a different day. I don't want to just depress every Seattle fan that there is. To make you guys feel better, you're getting a hockey team in a couple years. 2021, you're getting a hockey team. So, good job, guys. Um So with the second overall pick in the 2009 MLB draft, the Seattle Mariners select outfielder Dustin Ackley from North Carolina College. So again, another polished, you know, another polished college player, this time an outfielder. He was considered one of the best players in college baseball. Um, Now, he was actually a high school shortstop, but when he went to the college, they converted him to uh, the center field. And also had him experiment around. They put him at first base all said and done. Now, he ends up going to second base as well. Just because he wants the versatility, it looks better for him. He played very well in college. And he, you know, he gets drafted second overall after his junior year, during his junior year. And that, that's enough for him. He's not going to go back to college for a senior year. You know, you can't go much higher than second overall. Um, especially with the fact that, you know, Bryce Harper was going in the 20, uh, 2010 draft, so you were not going to pass Harper. Harper had such high expectations and definitely hit him. Um, so he ends up making the majors in 2011. So the Seattle Mariners kind of just rushed, not rush him through the mi- mi- minors, but uh, they did make him go through the minors a little quicker, maybe. But again, he was a college player, so he didn't need the experience in the minors. Um, he played well as a rookie. He hits 273 in 90 games, but he only hit six home runs. So, you know, he's not showing great power, which is always a little concerning. I don't want to hold my hand here the whole day, but if I have to, I will. Mm, we'll see. If it gets worse, I'll do it. But um, so in 2012, Ackley, you know, pitchers got used to him. And he only hits 226, but he did play in 153 games. Now, he stole, at this point, he stole career-high 13 bases. So, you know, he's not achieving what was hoped for him at this point in his career. 
So in 2014, what the what the uh, Mariners do is they end up signing Robinson Cano, who's a second baseman. So what this means is Ackley, you know, he's he's a second baseman at this point in the majors. They move him. They say, okay, hey, listen, we just got Robinson Cano. So what do you want to do? And he said, oh, you know what? I can play. I can play center field. So they put him in center field. So now he's a center fielder for the team. Uh, he he also played the corner outfield spots, but he was mainly center field. So at the trade deadline in 2015, after a couple more uninspiring seasons in Seattle, Ackley's traded to the New York Yankees. Now in New York, he only mustered all said and done with New York and Seattle. He only mustered a 2.31 average. And in May of 2016, he suffers a torn labrum, which is in the shoulder. So the Yankees end up releasing him after the 2016 season. So 2017, 18 come into play. And he signs, he signs a minor league deal with the LA Angels before the 2017 season. And he ends up playing in the minors for the Angels in 2017 and 2018. Now, before the 2019 season, he ends up returning to the Mariners on a minor league deal. But he does, he does not make a team. He gets cut. They don't put him in the minors. They just say, okay, goodbye. You know, he got the invitation to spring training, didn't play that well. So he ends up not signing anywhere in 2019. Um, he's currently a free agent. He's not retired. He's not on a team. He's just trying to get, you know, one last opportunity, more likely than not. He had a career war of 7.7. .7. So, you know, not what you want with a second overall pick, but better than some of these guys down the list. Um, so with the third overall pick, we get the San Diego Padres. Again, at this point, another team that's just been struggling immensely. And the Padres select outfielder Donovan Tate from a Georgian high school. So Donovan Tate, you know, not exactly the first outfielder that you're expecting to get drafted, especially when it comes to high schoolers in this draft. Because every, hindsight's 2020. We all know Mike Trout would have gone first overall. Strasburg would go second overall. But the thing is, we didn't know that. So Donovan Tate ends up, you know, he's the first high schooler drafted in the 2009 draft. Now, if you're saying, who the heck is Donovan Tate? I know who Ackley is. I know who Strasburg is. You're not alone. Um, Donovan Tate really just got hammered with injuries in his career early on. So he ends up suffering a broken jaw. He sprains his shoulder and has to go under. He has to undergo the knife for a sports hernia surgery all before the end of the 2010 season. So this young high schooler gets drafted. And within a year and a half of getting drafted, he has had three major injuries. And one of them obviously involves surgery. That's never good. Um, in June of 2011, he gets suspended 50 games after testing positive for a drug of abuse, which is a non-PED. So it more likely than not was something like cocaine, um, maybe marijuana. I think it was cocaine, more likely than not. Again, it could have been heroin, you know, just some illegal drug. Um, so... He ends up, you know, that was the second time in his career that he got caught with the drugs. So he ends up kind of leaving the team. He ends up voluntarily going to rehab in 2013. So that kind of really just slowed down his career even more so. And uh, he ends up getting released by the Padres after the Padres organization after the 2015 season. So he, didn't, he spends the start of 2016 in the L.A. Dodgers minor league system, but gets released in July of that year. So the problem with him is at that point, nothing happens. He just, he gives up on baseball. He never made it above class A advanced, which if you don't know, basically is the step below double A. It goes major league, triple A, double A, class A advanced, and then like class A and then rookie ball, typically. Um, so that's where he is. He never made it above class A advanced. And he was a career 226 hitter while in the minors. In 2017, like I said, he gave up on baseball. He went to football. He went to college, he went to Arizona, and he was a quarterback for the Arizona Wildcats for a season, but nothing came of it, and he ends up leaving the team, and at this point, he's just done. He's not playing sports anymore. He's, I think, he, I forget what he does now, but it's like, he, he doesn't want to be in the public anymore. Um, so that means his war is 0, 0.0. So then we get to the fourth pick. With the fourth overall pick, we had the Pittsburgh Pirates selecting. And the Pirates go with a catcher named Tony Sanchez out of Boston College. Now, Tony Sanchez, you know, it's always surprising to see a catcher go that early, especially when it's not a name that you know. 
So um, Sanchez was a polished college hitter when he was drafted. And, you know, he, he, he played well. He leads Boston College in a few different stats. Um, I'm pretty sure he has, like, the most hits in Boston College history. And he's actually the highest ever player drafted out of Boston College at fourth overall. So he dominated single A after getting drafted. He hit over 300. And he, he was just so good. Like I said, he was a polished hitter. And he ends up, you know, when he gets promoted, he kind of struggles. And he only hits about 250 when he gets in the double A AA and triple A. Um, he makes his MLB debut in the summer of 2013. So he's already a better pick than Donovan Tate. And he kind of bounces around from AAA and, and Major League Baseball, spending more time in AAA um, from 2013 to 2015. Um, I mean, he, he really he didn't make a lasting impression for the Pirates. That was the problem with him. So he only hit 259 with four homers and 144 at-bats throughout those three seasons. So he really didn't do enough to keep them, make them keep him on the roster. You know, roster spots are valuable. Those 25, now 26, and 40-man rosters, they're valuable. You don't want to lose a good guy. If someone like Tony Sanchez is eating up a spot, it's worthless. Trust me. I have Andrew Knapp on my team's roster. Enough about Knapp. <laughs> um, so he ends up getting designated for the assignment in January of 2016, and he's released a week later. So he ends up signing a minor league deal with the Toronto Blue Jays, but gets cut in July of 2016. And he ends up going to the San Francisco Giants minor league team in August of 2016 and is called up in late September, but he doesn't play snap he, or sorry, he doesn't play a pitch. He just kind of, he sits on the bench. He was just there in case due to injury, if they needed him. So in December, 2016, he ends up, you know, he leaves the Giants and he goes to the LA angels and he ends up getting traded to the Atlanta Braves minor league organization in August of 2017. And he makes one appearance. He gets caught up by the Braves. He makes one appearance, and he strikes out in his lone bat for the Braves. Um, in February of 2018, he signs a minor league deal with the Cincinnati Reds. And in April of 2018, he's traded to the Texas Rangers minor league team. He spends 2018, 2019 in the minors. And then after that, he just kind of – he elects to become a free agent. And I wrote this a little while ago. Let me just – quickly check and see if he signed with anybody i don't think he has no he is not yeah he is not signed with anybody so he's still a free agent um his career war is 0.1 so he's barely above a replacement player and that's mostly just because he uh you know he's been in the minors most of his career and war doesn't count for the minors. So it doesn't matter if you, if you hit 1000 in the minors, they don't care. It doesn't count. War doesn't matter. So after that, we get to the fifth overall pick and another team. I feel sorry for the Baltimore Orioles are on the clock and they go with a pitcher. They go with pitcher Matt Hopgood from a Californian high school. And that was a weird little thing. I just saw fly behind me. I don't know if it was a reflection or what, but, uh, um, so Hopgood has an amazing career in high school. He actually puts himself on the radar during his junior season because he plays against Garrett Cole. We all know who Garrett Cole is. And he actually just – he actually outduels him and beats him in a massive pitcher's duel. And this is, a, again, a junior Matt Hopgood playing a senior Garrett Cole. Um, he went 21-1 and during his junior and Caesar, senior seasons. And he also hit 40 homers. Now, the Orioles draft him as a starting pitcher. They say, okay, look, you got, you got some power, but we like your pitching ability, so welcome aboard. Um, he struggles in his first taste of professional baseball, going one and two with a 4.73 earned run average in rookie baseball. Now, as a high schooler going to the majors or going, going to rookie ball, it's different because you're playing a lot of college hitters. So especially if you're a pitcher, you're going to struggle. It's just a given. So they didn't really worry about it. Um, he never, the problem is though, I don't know if it was a case of the yips or what, he never develops. He doesn't develop into what they wanted him to. So after 2012, or in the 2012 season, he ends up undergoing shoulder surgery to repair a loose shoulder capsule. I don't know what that is, 
but it explains that he was injured, so he wasn't playing at 100%. Um, when he returns in 2013, he ends up becoming to a relief pitcher to, re- to uh, you know, limit the stress and the strain on his shoulder and the wear and tear and all that good stuff. Now, his ERA stays around 4.00, and Hopgood basically remains in single A through the 2013 season. In 2015, he finally gets promoted to double A. In the summer of 2015, though, he undergoes another surgery in his shoulder to remove a bone spur which effectively ended his season. He becomes a free agent after the 2015 season, and the Orioles are just like, okay, whatever. So in 2016, he ends up signing in the Frontier League, but he never plays. He ends up getting placed on the suspended list, and he's unsigned to this day. He has not expressed any interest in retiring that I'm aware of. So his career war is 0.0. He never made it to the majors. Sorry, Baltimore. So at this point, we have five players selected. Steven Strasburg and Dustin, you know, Ackley both made their names known more in the MLB. Obviously, Strasburg's a much better player. Ackley's okay. Tony Sanchez at least made it to the majors. But then you got Donovan Tate and Matt Hopgood never even made it to the majors. So three swings and misses. One position, you know, I'd say Seattle kind of did okay. They made contact, if I'm using baseball analogies, and they got a single. Then The Nationals got a triple, but Trout's a homer. Trout's a grand slam. So, um, so the sixth overall pick comes into play, and this is a guy we know. The new San Francisco Giants select starting pitcher Zach Wheeler from a Georgia high school. Second player selected from a Georgia high school this year. Interesting. Um, so Wheeler was the top prospect in the Giants organization right when he was drafted. Now, he, he just he spends time in the minors. And he does well in the minors. He ends up getting traded to the New York Mets in July of 2011. He was the biggest name. Oh, boy. He was the biggest name in uh, the draft at that moment. Or in the in the Giants, sorry, in the Giants minor league system at the moment. I'll explain in a second what's going on. But um, he ends up dominating double A for the Mets in 2012. 2013, he becomes the number six prospect in baseball before the start of the season, and he ends up making his MLB debut in June of 2013 for the Mets. His ERA hangs around 3.5 with a whip around 1.33 through his first two seasons. Now, in March of 2015, he undergoes Tommy John surgery, which obviously ended his 2015 season. Now, in August of 2016, he, he had a little setback. In August of 2016, he comes back on a minor league rehab stint and he ends up suffering a mild flexor strain, which isn't anything major, but after Tommy John and with a young guy, the Mets said, okay, that's enough. And they shut him down. So he didn't pitch at all in 2016 in the majors. Um, He suffered arm injuries, you know, through and through in 2017. So he struggled immensely. Uh, 2018 comes into play and he has the best year of his career up to that point with a 3.3 run earn run average and a 1.124. Um, he regressed slightly in 2019, but he still played well. Not great, but still okay. And before the 2020 season, he signed with my Phillies. So we got we got him. He got a big deal from the Phillies. We'll see what happens. Fingers crossed he does good. Um, his career war at this point is 10.5. So basically what I got sidetracked on, I do apologize for that, is Major League Baseball is having, you know, as we all know, the whole coronavirus discussion thing is going out of play. And the owners offered a counter deal to the, what the players wanted. Remember, the pl- owners offered the first deal. wasn't good. Players countered with a deal that wasn't good. The owners countered back, and it was actually a decent deal from what I saw. And apparently, the players are not happy with it. So, yeah, wonderful. We might not get baseball in 2020. Wouldn't that be something? Hopefully, we do. Um, you know, when updates end up coming into play, we will update you guys with videos. It would be either me or Patrick. So we'll see what happens. But uh, yeah, anyway, um, with the seventh overall pick, we have a team that was okay at that time. But seventh overall pick, the Atlanta Braves select pitcher Mike Miner, a polished pitcher out of Vanderbilt University. So he was a highly decorated pitcher of Vanderbilt. He ends up debuting for the, uh, for the Braves in August of 2010. So he had a quick run through the minors. And he records 12 strikeouts in his third career start. 
So that sets the Braves rookie record for strikeouts in a single game. His ERA hangs around 4.10 in 2011, 2012. So, you know, he's okay. He's not great. But remember, the Braves were not a good team at that point. Um, he has a strong 2013 season. He goes 13-9 and nine with a 3.2 run earned run average. Now, 2014, he struggles. But after the season, we find out he was dealing with all these shoulder. He had shoulder soreness, which is never good for a pitcher. Now, he gets put on the DL to start the 2015 season. And he ends up undergoing surgery in May of 2015 for a torn labrum. Again, shoulder, muscle. And uh, after the 2015 season, he ends up going to the Kansas City Royals as a free agent. Braves didn't tenor him, so he just he was a free agent. He goes to the Royals, and he misses all of 2016 recovering from the surgery. 2017, he's a reliever for the Royals, you know, nothing great. Just kind of easing him back into action. Now, he ends up signing the, a three-year deal with the Rangers, and uh, prior to 2018, and he, he went back to starting in 2018. 2019 was the best year of his career, and he actually made an all-star game, his first. And uh, he recorded a career high in innings pitched and strikeouts. So, you know, he's rebounding. Um, he doesn't have too, too much time left. Of course, he was a college player being drafted, so he's probably at 33 or something. It's funny because I remember when I heard Mike Miner was drafted before Trout. I'm like, wait, what? Because you look at the guy's picture, he has white facial hair and all that good stuff. I'm like, dude, come on, man. Come on. No way Mike Myers drafted the same year as Trout. His career war is 17.7. So that's pretty good. I think that's the uh, – does that tie? No, yeah, it's the second best behind, of course, Strasburg at this point. Uh, plus, we all know who Mike Miner is. So now we get to the eighth overall pick, which was the Cincinnati Reds. And they select a pitcher, Mike Leak. Now, Leak went to uh, Arizona State University, so yet another collegiate pitcher getting drafted. So he was, in 2010, he actually makes the Reds out of spring training. So he, uh, he becomes their fifth starter. So he actually does not throw a single pitch in any Reds minor league system. So he doesn't throw at all in the Reds minor leagues. And he is one of 21 players, one of 21 players to go straight from being drafted into the majors. Now, he didn't immediately remember. He gets drafted in the summer of 09, and he doesn't make it until – he doesn't get there until, you know, early 2010. But he didn't play professionally for the Reds or anything like that. So, um, he starts off his career hot, and he actually wins his first – five decisions so that doesn't mean that the team won his first five games it means the first five games that he got the decision win or loss he got a win so he ends up suffering from shoulder fatigue in the summer and the red shut him down you know he wasn't doing good he's a he's a rookie he didn't play you know minor league baseball for you so you shut him down understandably so he plays well in 2011 but regressed slightly in 2012 um 2013, Leak goes 14 and 7 with a 3.37 earn run average. Now, 2014, he gets a career high 164 strikeouts, but with a 3.7 ERA, which still isn't bad. Um, at the trade deadline in 2015, he gets shipped to the San Francisco Giants, and he did not play good in San Francisco. Surprisingly, he ends up getting a five year contract from the St. Louis Cardinals prior to the 2016 season. But he did not play good in San, in St. Louis. Um, he went 16 and 24 with a 4.46 earned run average as a Cardinal. Um, he was only there until August of 2017, so in like just under two years, he did not play well. They threw money; it didn't work out. Uh, he ends up finishing 27. He ends up getting traded to the Seattle Mariners, and he plays well in Seattle. Not great, but well. In 2018, he goes 10 and 10, but he. Did not get strikeouts. He only had 5.77 strikeouts per nine innings pitched. That's not good. That, that was the lowest mark in the majors that year. And he allowed the highest contact rate in the majors that year at 84.8. That's not good either. Um, he played decent in 2019 for Seattle. And he did throw, he did have a perfect game into the ninth inning against the Angels. That was a very random perfect game watch. I remember 
I got the notification. It's like, oh, yeah, Mike Leak has a perfect game through six innings. I'm like, what? Mike Leak? What? I watched it. I remember seeing the hit. I'm just like, oh. Um, he gets traded to the Arizona Diamondbacks at the trade deadline, and he ends up leading the majors in home runs allowed and hits allowed. Not things you want to lead the majors in as a pitcher. His career war is 16.9. Um, we get to, now we're getting to tougher days. Now we're getting to tougher days. So at the ninth overall pick, the Detroit Tigers select pitcher Jacob Turner from a Missouri high school. So he spends all of 2010 in the Tigers minors, and he makes his MLB debut in July of 2011. So decent, decent time for a um, you know high school player. He gets traded to the Miami Marlins in July of 2012, and he just did not play that well in Detroit. He went one and two with an 8.28 earned run average in the six appearances he made. Not at all what you want from a guy you picked before, Mike Trout. Um, you know, despite his bad record, he played well in a Miami. Not great, but well. You know, he had a 3.85 run run average. Now, he was designated for the assignment in uh, August of 2014. And he, was un- he ends up getting traded to the Chicago Cubs. Now, he struggled for the Cubs. And he misses all of 2015 with an injury. 2016, he goes to the White Sox and they use him. They take him and they say, "You're not a starter anymore. You're a reliever. Your injuries are getting you." So he goes to the he goes to the White Sox, and in 2017, he signs with the Nationals on a minor league deal. He gets called up in spring and hangs around as a uh, relief pitcher through July. Ends up getting demoted and goes back to the Marlins in 2018, but he gets cut by the Marlins in June of 2018. He goes back to Detroit in june of 2018 on a minor league deal he gets called up in august but only for one appearance it was a start it was either in a doubleheader or right after a doubleheader i think it was for the doubleheader and uh he spent 2019 in the kbo korean baseball organization right now he's a free agent so nobody wants him he hasn't had a great major league career as evidenced by his war being negative 2.6 so not at all a good pick from what you want after that, you know, we get the 10th overall pick, and we have – it's a comp pick. So comp picks, basically, if you don't sign your first-round pick in a previous year, they'll give you a pick the next year. So let's just say you're drafting second overall and you don't sign your pick, you're going to get a comp pick in the next year around the place that you got your – that you missed your signing. Um, yeah, it, that would have been nice for, uh, you know, Phillies fans if – the whole J.D. Drew fiasco wouldn't have happened. We would have gotten some pick compensation in return. Different story for a different day. Um, so the Nationals are on the clock. They didn't sign their 20, 2008 first-round pick, so they get the comp pick here, 10th overall. And they go with a pitcher, pitcher Drew Storen out of Stanford University. Now, Storen signed the day after being drafted. He wanted to go right into it. He was done. He wanted to go play baseball. Um, he flies through the minors, and makes his MLB debut in May of 2010. He began his major league career as a middle reliever because they kind of said, okay, you don't have the stuff to be a starter. We're going to use you as a reliever. And uh, he ends up, you know, he ends up taking the closing role from the, for the Nationals in 2011. Now, 2011 is probably the best playing time of his career. He records 43 saves, has a 2.75 earned run average, and a 1.022 whip. Now, he misses the first half of 2012 after having an elbow surgery. And the problem for him was he returns, and he's not the closer anymore. He's a part of a committee of closers. So he blows the save versus the St. Louis Cardinals and the 2012 NLDS. I remember watching that game. I remember the plays. You know, I I remember watching him blow the save, and you feel bad. But at the same time, I'm a Phillies fan, so I'm like, that's ah, little brother Nationals. What do I care? Baby Philly, if you want to call them that. Their home stadium gets overrun by our fans every day. <laughs> they used to before they put in a new rule. But, um, yeah, so he becomes a middle reliever in 2013 and most of 2014 before going back to a closing role. Um, he struggles in 2015 after Washington acquires Jonathan Papelbon from the Phillies. And he ends his season after breaking his thumb. So what he did is he got frustrated after blowing a save and the fact that they got Papelbon and all that. So he punches a locker, right? 
he breaks his thumb, ends his season. Like, come on, man. So he ends up getting traded to Toronto in January of 2016, but he just struggles big time in Toronto. He did not take well to his new environment. He gets designated for the assignment in July. He gets traded to Seattle after getting designated for the assignment, and he played better. He ends up going to the Reds for the 2017 season, and he actually threw an immaculate inning. I love immaculate innings. It's when you go, you're a pitcher, you go, you play one inning, you face three batters, each batter gets three pitches, they're all strikes. It doesn't matter if it's a foul, foul strike, foul, foul strike, foul, foul strike, or just th- nine consecutive strikes. They could all be swinging strikes. They could all be just called strikes. It could be foul ball, swinging strike, called strike three, swinging strike, foul, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. As long as it's nine pitches to get the three guys out, all strikeouts, immaculate inning. Pretty dang cool. Good accomplishment. Um, his season ended – after it was announced that he needed Tommy John surgery, which also caused him to miss the 2018 season. He, um, he ends up signing a minor league deal with the Kansas city Royals for 2019. And he gets released in June. He didn't get called up. And he actually signed a minor league deal with the Phillies for the 2020 season with an invitation to spring training. Um, no guarantees making the team, maybe with the expanded rosters, he would, but um, his career war 4.8. Nothing great, nothing horrible either, but uh, give me one second. I do apologize. All right. So with our next pick, we get the Colorado Rockies on the clock, and they go with pitcher Tyler Matzek from a California high school. Um, so Matzek ends up beginning his career with major control issues. So that's never good. You know, you don't want your pitcher to have control issues. I've mentioned it before. I like guys like Shane Bieber. I'd rather have my pitcher go out there and give up three hits with all three being solo shot homers than have my guy go out there in one game. He crushes it getting 20 strikeouts. And then the next game he allows, you know, seven homers and five walks. I don't want that. So yeah, there's concerns. I get, I get it. But, um, so He walked so many players and was starting to hit guys with pitches, which is never good. You never want to have a hit by pitch, obviously. So um, he ends up taking a mental break, as they called it, in 2011 for a month. And it it was to help calm him down. You know, he took some time off. He just he had the yips. He ends up eventually saying that he had the yips and that was that was what was, uh, you know, killing him. He was just struggling. Um, as a as a guy who you know, I'm not the biggest baseball or sorry basketball fan, but I do know Markel Fultz had the yips, and that just completely screwed up his career with the Sixers. Um, so he comes back, and in 2012, he goes in the minors again. He's still in the minors at this point, and he proves to be a real all or nothing player. So he ends up leading the league in strikeouts, but he also led the league in walks. So. He makes his MLB debut in June of 2014 and plays respectively, especially for a Colorado pitcher. He goes 6-11 with a 4.05 earned run average, 1.394 whip, 91 strikeouts and 44 walks in 117.2 innings. Now, um, for the record, point two, basically how baseball works with innings pitch. If you pitch one inning, it's one. If you pitch one in the third, it's 1.1. If you pitch one and two thirds, it's 1.2. And if you pitch two innings, it's two. So they just do, you know, 0.1.2 back to zero. That confused me when I was younger. Um, So he starts 2015 in Colorado, but control issues just completely derailed his career from that point. And he gets demoted after five starts. He ends up ending the season on the the, uh, disabled list. It was the disabled list at the time. Um, I probably, if I do say disabled list in 2019 on, I do apologize for that. I know they changed it to injured list. Um, it's just, I've grown up with baseball calling it the disabled list DL. So yes, it was the DL at this point. Um, he ends up getting released by the Rockies organization after 2016. And he ends up going on a minor league deal to the Chicago white Sox for 2017, but doesn't make the team and gets released out of spring training in March, late March. He signs a minor league deal 
with the Seattle Mariners in 2018, but again was released in March. So guys, people are taking chances on him, but they're just not, you know, he's not doing what they want him to do. So in April of 2018, he ends up signing with a team in the Independent Baseball League American Association. So it's just like another independent league team. Not, doesn't really mean all that much, but uh, ah, what the heck is going on? That was weird. My screen just kind of went black for a second. Or a real split second. I do apologize. For, again, this is my first time doing a live stream. So I do apologize for a couple little things here that are going around that are happening. Um, let me see if I can fix this. Okay, there we go. That was weird. Uh, again, I apologize for that. Um, he signs a minor league baseball deal with the Arizona Diamondbacks in 2019, and he ends up getting released in May. He goes back to the American Association in June, and in August of 2019, he signs a minor league baseball deal with the Atlanta Braves. He's currently on their AAA system team. So there's still a chance for him, but again, the problem is with a lot of these guys, you know, there's a chance he would be cut by now if it was a regular season. Um, his career war is 2.8. Not bad for a Colorado pitcher, starting pitcher. Now we get to the 12th overall pick where the Kansas City Royals select pitcher Aaron Crow. Interesting fact about Aaron Crow. Remember two picks ago, I said the Washington Nationals didn't sign their first round pick. It was Aaron Crow. <laughs> so uh, he, he obviously was in college because he was a junior when the Nationals drafted him. He didn't sign, so he comes back. He's a senior this year. Um, so he's, he's picked out of Missouri. So um, he, he spent the 2009 season in the United Baseball – in the sorry, United League Baseball. I was so confused when I saw that. I'm like, what? United League Baseball. So in 2010, he's in the minors for the Royals, and he makes his MLB debut on opening day in 2011 for the Royals. He is a solid 2011. Nothing, nothing to write home about, but, you know, good enough. Um, he was the Royals' lone representative at the All-Star Game 2011. So he made an All-Star Game pretty damn early in his career. First All-Star in this class. Doesn't mean much because, you know, He's not Mike Trout. <laughs> um, he ends up, he serves as a middle reliever for the Royals from 2011, 2014. Nothing great, but he goes a combined 20 wins, 11 losses, 3.43 earned run, um, and six saves. So he ends up getting traded to the Miami Marlins after the 2014 season. He spends 2015 in the minors for the Miami Marlins. In 2016, he spends with the Cubs minor league organization. Um, he spends the 2018 season in Mexican Baseball League, where he's, you know, he's still a free agent today. Um, his career war is 2.7, so not great. Again, good, but not great. Not worthy of being picked before Trout. Uh, we get the 13th overall pick, where the Oakland Athletics selected shortstop Grant Green from USC. Um, he starts his minor league career as a shortstop, and... In 2011, he ends up converting to outfield because he was bad as a defensive player at shortstop. Um, he hit well, around 300, through the 2012 season in the minors for Oakland, but he, I can't stress this enough, he really struggled on defense. He was horrible on defense. Now, you might say, oh, why not just put him as DH? You, you, want, you want this guy to work on defense in the minors. Who cares if your minor league team goes, you know, 60 and 80 they don't care they want the major league team to be good so they don't care they'd rather not stunt his growth they want him to be ready for the majors you know as good as he can be so he makes his mlb debut in july of 2013 and he ends up getting traded to the los angeles angels so that should tell you something right there because he's traded during his rookie season to a rival team that should tell you right there what they thought about him he bounced around between the Angels and their minor league team from 2013 and 2015, and he ends up getting DFA designated for the assignment after the 2015 season. He signs a minor league deal with the San Francisco Giants for the 2016 season. 
And he, he gets called up. He's kind of called up and bounced back to the minors. He ends up uh, spending most of July in the majors. Now, in 2017, he signs a minor league deal with the Nationals. He gets released in June. And he ends up signing with the Chicago White Sox a week after getting cut, but gets cut in August. He signs a minor league deal with the Miami Marlins to close out 2017, but elects free agency rather than staying in the minors for the Marlins after the season and spends 2018 in the Mexican Baseball League. But just like Aaron Crow, he's unsigned to this day, and he has a career war of negative 1.7, mostly due to his bad defense. No defense isn't good. You know, you need defense if you want to be a major league player. Now, this is a really easy one. 14th overall pick, Texas Rangers select pitcher Matt Perk from a Texas high school. Perk does not sign with the Rangers. Yeah. You pick a guy who doesn't even sign with you before Mike Trout. Sorry, Rangers fans. Uh, He went to TCU after, you know, getting not draft, not signing. He gets drafted by the nationals in 2011 and uh, he never makes the team for them. He was a third round pick. Um, He ends up spending 2016 in the majors with the white Sox, but didn't do much. Uh, negative 0.1 career war. Doesn't count against the Rangers because it didn't sign him. Um, fact of the matter is you didn't get Mike Trout. Let me see real quick here. Like you could have had Mike Trout, but you didn't get Mike Trout. You picked a guy who didn't even sign with you. How does that make you feel? Um, they end up getting, oh, wow, even better. So they end up drafting a guy named Jake Skull with the comp pick they get. I don't even know who this guy is. So, sorry, guys. Sorry. Sorry, Texas. So, I'm going to get to the 15th pick. The Cleveland Indians select pitcher Alex White from North Carolina. Second player from North Carolina being drafted, first being Dustin Ackley. Um, White was considered a top 100 prospect in baseball after signing. Of course, a lot of top 20 players drafted are going to be considered top 100 prospects. Not all of them, but a lot of them. Um, He plays well in the minors in 2010, and he makes his MLB debut in late April 2011. Um, He only makes three starts for Cleveland, and in July 2011, he ends up getting traded to the Colorado Rockies, a death sentence for most pitchers. Um, He spends... About two-thirds of the uh, 2012 season in Colorado and a third of it in AAA. And he ends up undergoing, sorry, he ends up getting traded to Houston after the 2012 season. But really before he can make his name known in Houston, he ends up undergoing Tommy John in April, which wipes out the rest of his 2013 season. And he appears in 25 games with 10 of them being starts in 2014 for Houston's AAA team. And he struggles to start the 2015 season. So the Astros, you know, at this point, the Astros still, they weren't known for their amazing anything. So they always tried to acquire prospects for cheap and hope that they'd pan out. This one didn't, so they just cut ties with them. They said whatever. So in early June. So he ends up signing a minor league deal with the Braves soon after, but he only lasted about a month before getting cut. And he goes with the he goes to the uh, American Association Baseball League there in May of 2017, but gets released in August. And he spends half of June 2018 in the Atlantic League of Professional Baseball. Yeah, that's a real league. Um, before getting cut. Now he's still unsigned today. Negative 0.4 WAR. Not not a great player, especially not worthy compared to Trout. Um, 16th overall pick. We get back to back picks from Arizona here. 16th overall, they select third baseman Bobby Borshering. I hope I'm not mispronouncing his name. There's like nothing really about this guy, Bobby Borshering. Um, he, he was drafted out of Florida High School. So he has a strong 2010 in single A, which included him being named a single A All-Star. Um, 2011, he gets promoted, but he starts striking out an awful lot. And he was, again, still an All-Star because not a lot of great players are in single A for long. You get promoted, you get demoted, you know, you're flying. Th- if you're great, you're flying through. So um, he proved to be too good for class A advance. So he gets promoted 
um, to double A, but he struggles in double A. He gets traded to the Houston Astros and finishes the season double A for Houston. Again, Houston trying to buy low on a prospect that has high hope, high potential, a la like J.D. Martinez, for example. But obviously J.D. was a bad example because they gave up on him. But um, he ends up going to rookie ball in 2013. Not a good sign, man. And uh, he gets promoted to single A, but he only plays 16 games in 2014 due to various injuries at different times that all but wiped out his season. He gets released by the Astros organization after 2014. He signs a minor league deal with Detroit in 2015 and barely hits above the Mendoza line, gets cut in July. He, I, There's no reports on him actually officially retiring, but he's probably retired. He hasn't played baseball since 20, early 2015. Career war is 0.0 because he never made it to the majors. Now, 17th overall pick, Arizona's on the clock again. And this is a comp pick because the Dodgers signed one of their former players. So this was the Dodgers pick. But how baseball did it is if you if you lost like a top free agent to a team, you'd get their first round pick. They also let you do second and third for a little while. So like some teams didn't have first round picks for a while. But the Dodgers here give their pick to the Arizona Diamondbacks. And with that pick, the Diamondbacks select outfielder A.J. Pollock out of Notre Dame. Pollock, of course, I mentioned him before when I was talking about the Dodgers in our favorite NL players video. He's actually from Connecticut. So shout out to him. Shout out to my state. Shout out to Heartland Sports State. Love him. Um, he ends up breaking his elbow in spring training 2010 because, he, he, you know, they thought he was pretty much ready for MLB baseball. Um, the injury forced him to miss the entire season because it was a bad injury, and it's actually an injury that still bothers him to this date. Um, he flies through the minors, you know, despite this injury, and he ends up making his MLB debut in April 2012. He bounces around between AAA and, ba- and the majors in 2012, though, because he wasn't good enough, and the Diamondbacks, you know, they're like, okay, we like this guy, but we want him to get experience. We don't want him to rot away on the bench. Um, he begins to carve out a role in the majors in 2013. He appears in 137 games. 2014 is when he really starts to break out. But in late May, he takes a pitch to the hand, breaks his hand, and it just it kills his season, it kills his momentum. Um, he ends up coming back, and he plays another 70. He plays 75 games in the season with a with a 302 average, but the injury really hurt him. It just it slowed him down big time. 2015 is his best year, though, at this point in his career. He makes the All-Star game, appearing in 157 games, hitting 20 homers, 39 doubles, and a 315 average with 39 stolen bases. That's my type of guy. That's what I like. You know, some power, doubles, stolen bases, good defense. That's what I like. Uh, he ends up, again, breaking his elbow in spring training 2016 which limited him to only 12 games in 2016. Uh, 2017, he fights through injuries again, which really limited him. 2018, same narrative, dealing with more injuries. So this guy's getting that injury-prone label. He signs a you know a four-year contract with the Dodgers before the 2019 season. Um, you know he, he was looking around. He goes to the Dodgers. Good for him. Uh, in late April, he ends up going on the DL with elbow inflammation, and he returns in mid-July. Uh, he only appeared in 96, 86 games for the team. So that elbow injury, his rookie, you know, in 2010, might have screwed his career over. He's got a career war of 19.2, so not bad. Not Mike Trout, but not bad. Um, with the 18th overall pick, the Florida Marlins went with a pitcher from an Oklahoma high school named Chad James. You might be saying, Chad James? Who is Chad James? It's a fair thing to say. Um, he starts off his ML, he starts off his minor league career in 2010. Obviously, um, in mid-April, he ends up on the DL for a month with shoulder tendonitis, tendonitis. Sorry, tendonitis, shoulder tendonitis. He struggles. Um, he ends up getting promoted in 2011. He cuts down his ERA, so he plays better, but his WHIP is still about the same. So it comes down to. Was he unlucky as a rookie or was he lucky as a you know sophomore pitcher in the league? Um, he records a career high strike out. He court, he records a career high in strikeouts 
but it was in a career high innings pitch, so it's kind of like, okay, well, you should be getting more strikeouts to be playing more. Um, he remains in Class A advanced in 2012, but regressed. He gets demoted to single A, and he struggles again, de- dealing with injuries. So in March of 2014, the Marlins release him. In July, he signs a minor league deal with the Texas Rangers. He gets suspended for 50 games um, after testing positive for a banned drug, a PED. And he ends up getting promoted to um, double A in June. He gets converted, he gets converted to a reliever or a relief pitcher, so he's no longer a starter. And he did not play well for the Rangers, you know, as well as I'd hoped. He elects free agency after 2015. And he fails another drug test right after free agency, right after becoming a free agent. And he's suspended for 100 games. He has yet to serve that suspension because nobody signed him. So he's all but retired at this point. No one's going to touch a guy who the second they sign him, they have to, you know, send him out for 100 games. Uh, War 0.0 because he never made it to the majors. Now we're getting closer to the trout picks, to the trout pick, sorry. But um, here we are with our 19th pick, the St. Louis Cardinals select pitcher Shelby Miller out of a high school from in Texas. So he ends up starting his career off in the Class A. Nothing crazy about that. Um, he is the Cardinals minor league pitcher of the year in 2010. So he's definitely on the radar at this point. He's considered a top pitching prospect in 2011, and he flies through high A, no problems. He plays well in double A in 2011, and again, is the Cardinals minor league pitcher of the year. He starts off 2012 in triple A and struggles, but ends up adjusting and playing well. So it's like, okay, this guy, yeah, he struggled, but fact is he's adjusting. He's making a name for himself. He's showing that he can adjust, which is great. So he makes his MLB debut late that year in September 2012. And he's not a starter, but he joins the starting rotation in 2013. He allowed a single to open up a game in May of 2013. This is interesting. After that single, he retires 27 consecutive batters. So that's one of the almost perfect games in history. He was so close. If he wouldn't have allowed that single, it would have been a perfect game. Um, so he, you know, he cools off as the season progresses, which is kind of expected from a, you know, technically rookie pitcher he finishes third in nl cy young or nl rookie of the year voting that year though um he ends up having a similar season 2013 2014 but he started recording less strikeouts he gets traded to the atlanta braves after the season and he leads the majors in losses but this wasn't necessarily a reflection on him as much as how bad the braves were at that point so he makes the all-star game as the braves you know representative And he has a 3.02 earn run average. So, yeah, it hurts to lead the league in losses, but it means you're good because if you're that bad, the team's going to cut you or demote you or, you know, put you in a relief role. So, yeah, it sucks to lead the league in losses. But um, after the 2015 season, he gets traded to the Arizona Diamondbacks in that fleecing of a trade where the Diamondbacks gave up Dansby Swanson, shortstop, who was one of their top pick, who was the top pick in that year's draft and um, Ender NCRT, a former Philly of a spring training. And uh, I don't want to get started on that, but uh, you know, he ends up going back to Diamondbacks and yeah, he's done good there in Atlanta. So he really struggles in his new environment. He finished off the season with a 3-12 record with a 6.15 ERA and a 1.637 whip. In late April of 2017, he had to undergo Tommy John surgery, a recurring theme with our pitchers here. Um, He appears only in five games in 2018, four of of which were starts, but struggled immensely with a 10.69 ERA. Granted, you know, it's a small sample size. He ends up getting released by Arizona after 2018, And he signs with the Texas Rangers in 2019. Um, He was released in early July. And he ends up going to the Milwaukee Brewers on a minor league deal for the rest of the year. And he ends up, you know, he actually elects to go to free agency. And he ends up re-signing with them. I actually wrote out, you know, he opts out. 
And then I didn't see that he had resigned. So I went through, I was looking through my notes again. I'm like, oh shoot, this guy resigned. So I just wrote really small letters. Resigned in Milwaukee. So uh, he's got a career war of 7.8, mostly due to his one season in Atlanta. Now we get to the 20th overall pick with yet another pitcher, pitcher, the Toronto Blue Jays selecting pitcher Chad Jenkins out of Kennesaw State. I do apologize if I mispronounced that college name. I meant to uh, look it up, but uh, Kennesaw State. So he, be- he begins his minor league career. Um, he shows good strikeout ability early on, and he gets promoted to double A in 2012. Now, August 2012, here's the problem. He makes his MLB debut, so he kind of flies through. And he appears in 13 games as a rookie, starting in three of them. Um, he, so he pitches 32 innings as a rookie. He allows as many runs as he records strikeouts. Not good. He gets demoted before, you know, 2013. And he bounces between the minors and majors in 2013, while also dealing with some injuries. Um, he ends up... What? Oh, so he ends up bouncing around again in 2014, really going between AAA and majors. Um, he gets caught up six different times, and he ends up breaking his hand in September of 2014 and basically gets designated for the assignment after a forgetful 2015 in February of 2016, and he's unsigned to this day. Um He's got a career war of 1.4, so it's better than some of these other guys, but it's still not good enough to justify a first-round pick. Um, when we get to the 21st overall pick, the Houston Astros are on the clock. They go with shortstop Giovanni Meyer out of a California high school. Um, so basically... He plays rookie ball in 2009 and class A in 2010. Uh, he struggles to hit homers, only hitting two of them in 131 games. He moves up to class A advanced in 2011. He still struggled with power, only hitting 39. He looked good in 2012. Injuries limited him to only 51 games. He gets promoted to double A in 2013. He does not respond well, though. He hits below the Mendoza line. Um, he, you know, he had more homers than he did before, but he committed 20 errors. He gets promoted to AAA in 2014, but he did not flash enough potential for a call-up. 2015, he spends in AAA. He signs a minor league deal with Toronto after the 2015 season. More of the same in 2016. He only hits three homers in AAA. Um, in March of 2017, he signs a minor league deal with the New York Mets. He bounces around the minors in between double A and triple A that year. And he ends up signing in the Mexican baseball league for 2018. He's actually currently a deputy in uh, orange County, California career war 0.0. Um, I do apologize in a second. I'm going to have to run for a minute. Um, I I didn't realize what time it was, so I do definitely apologize for that, but um, I'm not going to start pitch player number 22 yet i only have three guys left i really do apologize for this i didn't realize that it was one o'clock i just got to do something at one o'clock real quick i do apologize but um yeah so basically again you know mike trout's a great player love mike trout these guys draft perform i don't mean to insult anybody i don't mean to insult any teams i don't mean to do any of that it's just kind of bad luck and all that good stuff you know sometimes you get unfortunate and unlucky and uh you make a bad pick, but I will be right back. I do apologize again. I didn't realize what time it was. I do apologize immensely. I'll be.
sorry about that. I do, again, I sincerely apologize for that. Um, I just had to grab something real quick at one o'clock. So again, I am really sorry about that quick delay there. Um, anyway, back to it. 22nd overall pick, the Minnesota Twins are on the clock. And they go with another pitcher from college, Kyle Gibson. Now, let's get it. This is better. So Gibson, out of Missouri. Um, Gibson really flies through the minors. So in 2010, he pushes his way to AAA. Now, midway through the 2011 season, he ends up getting hurt with a sore, with a uh, elbow injury, and surprise, surprise, needed Tommy John. So, unfortunately, Tommy John gets him. He returns to AAA in 2013, though, or 2012, sorry, late 2012, he comes back. And he makes his MLB debut in June of 2013. So he's making, he's making some progress here. Nothing great. He is making some progress. Um, he gets beat up big time in 10 starts as a rookie, though. Uh, he only goes 2-4 and four with a 6.3 or 6.53 earned run average. Not good. He does better his sophomore season going 13-12 with a 4.47 earned run average, second best on the team. Twins were not good. He does even better in 2015, dropping his ERA to 3.84, and he leads the team in wins and innings pitched. Now, he deals with a shoulder injury in early 2016, of course, concerning to people about Tommy John, but uh, it wasn't Tommy John. It just ends up hurting him through the season. Um, he doesn't play great, but he's not horrible. Now, 2017, he has the same, very similar statistics as 2016. 2018, though, he has like his career year at this point. He rebounds, setting career high in strikeouts per nine and innings pitched. 2019, he breaks his record again for strikeouts per nine innings pitched, averaging a strikeout per inning pitch, 9.9 strikeouts per nine innings pitched. 9.0, oh, sorry, 9.0 strikeouts per nine innings pitched. Um, he saw his whip increase, though, and his ERA. So after the 2019 season, he just signed with the Texas Rangers. He has a career war of 9.6. So now we're getting towards the end here. There's only two more picks to go. And this guy, I recently um, watched a little video on him. 23rd overall pick, the Chicago White Sox select outfielder Jared Mitchell out of LSU. So he was actually, um, he actually played college football and, high, and college uh, baseball. So he went on to win the 2009 College World Series with LSU after being drafted by the White Sox. He just, you know, they don't sign right away. They say, okay, listen, you know, you're still playing baseball. We get it. So he ends up getting the College World Series Most Outstanding Player Award. So this guy has high hopes. Um, now he finishes 2009 in Class A, and he ends up missing the 2010 season after tearing a tendon in his left ankle. Now, this is the video I saw. So he was talking about it, and he ends up saying he rushed back to baseball in 2011. He was at 60%, as he said. So he wasn't 100%. He comes back to baseball because he knows he has to play. The hope's there. And uh, he, he just he really struggles that year because he's not at 100%. He's, he said he's playing at 60%. So he gets promoted to double A in uh, 2012 because they said, okay, maybe it's a change of scenery. No, nah, you rushed him back from injury. That's the problem. And he ends up progressing, though, to triple A. Um. In 2012. Now, 2013, he gets demoted and uh, he bounces between double A and triple A. He makes it, he makes his way back to, uh, you know, he just, he keeps bouncing around at this point. And in May of 2015, he gets cut by the, the White Sox. He signs a minor league deal with the Angels for the 2015 season. But obviously, he doesn't make it to the majors. 2016, this is another sad part of Mitchell. So he signs a minor league deal with the Yankees. And in mid-May, he's playing for them. He's playing for the Trenton Thunder. He hits a home run, a walk-off home run. He said he felt like he was great. He's doing great. He's got this great team. The day, the day, the next day, he's in the, uh, you know, he's in the training facility. 
he gets a tap on the shoulder and says, you're getting released. Sorry. Came out of nowhere. The guy hits a walk-off homer one day, and the next day you cut him. Come on. Um, unfortunately for him, that's basically the end of his major league, that's of his MLB career. Um, he ends up going to the Atlantic League Professional Baseball in July of 2016. And his team actually goes on to win the championship, which, okay, that's fine. Doesn't help you at all, but uh, he played well. He signs a minor league deal with the Reds before the 2018 season, but he was released before the season began. And he returned to the American League, or sorry, the Atlantic League of Professional Baseball in April of 2018. And has bounced around on three teams since then. He's still on the teams there right now. Um, he never made a major league appearance, so his re- where, oh my gosh, his war is 0.0. Not bad, you know, not great, but this guy's at least getting some stuff done. Um, people, a lot of people who know him are saying, why is this guy still here? Why isn't he in a minor league deal? Big problem is his age at this point. So Jared Mitchell, feel for you, man. You know, it's injuries killed this guy's career. It's completely different than someone like Donovan Tate who had drugs kill his career. Drugs, I'm not going to get into an addiction discussion here, but, you know, drugs versus injuries, I'm going to feel more sad for the guy who had injury concerns. Um, so lastly now, we hit the 24th pick. Now, this is a comp pick from the New York Mets because they signed a player, and this is the LA Angels. So they had back-to-back picks. And the Angels select, surprisingly, another outfielder from high school named Randall uh, Grichik from Texas, a Texas high school. So they went back-to-back outfielder, high school outfielders. That's unheard of in the first round. Now, he ends up tearing a ligament in his thumb early on in 2010, and he ends up breaking his wrist shortly after returning, only playing 64 games in the season. He fractures his kneecap off of a foul ball. He fouls the ball, fractures his kneecap in 2011, and he plays his first full season in 2012. He gets promoted to AA in 2013, where he ends up winning a minor league gold glove in right field. He gets traded to the St. Louis Cardinals after the 2013 season. And, uh, you know, Cardinals fans were very excited about him, understandably so. This guy has a lot of potential. He's just dealt with injuries after injuries. Now, he makes his Major League debut in April of 2014 for the Cardinals. Uh, He bounces between AAA and the majors because they have so many outfielders at this point that they they don't want to have him sitting on the bench doing nothing. Um, He makes his Major League... Sorry. He makes the Major League team in 2015 as the team's fifth-string outfielder, and he played well when given the chance. So 2016 comes into play, and he wins the starting center field role. Um... He ends up bouncing between AAA and the majors, though, and he ends up getting traded to Toronto before the 2018 season. And he didn't play too, too spectacularly with average and all that, but he led the team in homers, tied for the team lead homers. In 2019, he led the team in homers, so he gets an extension, and he's currently a Blue Jay. So he's doing well in Toronto. He's not this amazing player, but he's doing well. Um, Career war, 9.4. So those are the 24 guys drafted before Trout. Now, as a Phillies fan, I can at least take solace in the fact that my team did not pick somebody over Mike Trout. You know, there's only a a group of us that can do that. Us uh, Milwaukee fans can say that. Yankees fans can say that. Interesting fact, the Mike Trout pick was actually a comp pick from the New York Yankees because they signed, oh my gosh, what the heck is his name? Uh, power hitting player too. I can't think of his name off the top of my head, but um, you know, a lot, a few of these teams, Boston, obviously, you didn't hear them. Um, Tampa Bay again, you know, these teams didn't screw up and pass on them, so it kind of stunk. But you know, I, I, at least my team didn't pass on Mike Trout. I feel bad for these teams that did. So the Yankees dra- took Mike, Mark Teixeira in free agency. So that's why the Angels got the Mike Trout pit. Now, the Yankees were rumored to be heavily interested in Mike Trout. So you can thank Mark Teixeira and the Angels 
for the Yankees not having Trout because the Yankees did have a pick a few picks later. Um, they got it for compensation for failure to sign Garrett Cole. I'm pretty sure that one was because I know they did draft Cole. And I don't remember if it was 07 or 08, but uh, they did draft Garrett Cole around that time. He didn't sign with them. Oh, the irony that, you know, now he's a Yankee. But, um, you know, Mike Trout, best player in baseball right now. I love Trout. I mentioned him before, five-tool prospect. Yeah, his power is not the best. But, you know, again, these are the 24 guys that were drafted before Trout. This is a project I've been working on for a while, like I said. Um, first pick was Strasburg, as you know. He did well. And then it really starts fluctuating. You get guys like Matt Hopgood and uh, – you know, Donovan Tate, Giovanni Meyer, who never made the majors. It's a shame, but you can't have every pick win. You can't win every single draft pick. It wouldn't be fun. But yeah, um, that's going to do it for today's video. It was the first video for me, you know, doing a live stream. You guys can see my face. Um, I do apologize for that one moment there. That's the problem with a live stream. Um, if I lose track of the time, you know, we're kind of just SOL and we wind up with me walking away for two minutes. I do apologize for that. Um, the live stream. And then again, when I had that random blank screen, um, I do apologize for that, but I do have more video suggestions and topics and all that stuff in my mind. This is my lovely notebook that I'll be using to do this stuff. Um, you can see my handwriting. It's kind of messy at places, but, um, yeah, I'm working on one right now. Um, it's not the Tom Brady one. It's another one that I'll surprise you guys with when we get to it. If you follow us on Twitter, you got a hint yesterday because I did drop a tweet hinting what the video is going to be. So, again, um, thank you for joining us here at Heartland Sports. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you have anything that you want to say. Definitely feel free to tell me in the comments. If you think the live stream was a stupid idea, feel free to tell me in the comments. Again, I do apologize for the two little uh, gaps I had during the stream. I enjoyed doing this. So, guys, again, thank you very much for being here. Heartland Sports and Eric out. Have a good day, guys. Do what the baseball guys do. Have a good day.